All right. We're here with uh, Riley Bymaster, scout for the Shrine Bowl, frequent, frequent-ish guest of the show, filling in the tripod. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. We're going to get into some 22, 22 class for some 23 class kind of stuff. Uh, first, let's, uh, let's, so Riley does a lot of scouting in these players and uh, we, we love hearing his opinion on various things. Uh, what you got, Matt? So, Riley, we always love talking about guys who might be flying under the radar. Who are two wide receivers and running backs who you think that uh, are getting enough love from the general public, a.k.a. the Twitter groupthink? Well, first off, I do have frequent flyer miles when it comes to the show because the only time I ever get the old mic out is to come on here. So Dust that thing out. Whip it out for us. <laughs> Whipping it out. So not talked about enough. You want to start backs or receivers? Uh, let's do the backs first. Do the backs first. Somebody who's not being talked about enough is Roshan Johnson from Texas. He's 6'2", 220. He can make you miss in a phone booth. Just unreal agility and lateral movement skills for somebody that big and lanky. And he can run through you. He's a good runner, viable receiver. He's fine in pass pro. Could get a little bit better. But he's a, I think he's a better Rashad White. Similar bodies, similar skill sets. Wouldn't shock me if he's a day two pick and just finds himself in a role where he's contributing next year. Need to talk about him as a possible top five back in this pretty deep class. Do you think he's getting overshadowed? Do you think he's getting overshadowed because of the guy that was playing ahead of him? 100%. It's almost like the Saquon to Miles Sanders shadow. <sighs> Because after Saquon came out, everybody said, uh, "No, Miles Sanders isn't going to be anything." And then look at us, look at us now. A little bit of pre cum right? just came right out of Matt. <laughs> that was that wasn't pre. That was the. Or you could say you could say it's the um uh, if we're if we're using current analogies, Penn State analogies, you could say that um uh, that Nicholas Singleton is Bijan Robinson and Katron Allen is a Rashawn Johnson. You lost me at, at like yeah. half of that because we're not quite Penn there. State. A lot of Penn State talk coming, though. Oh, yeah. I know who the receivers not, he's talking about are, so that's why I said running backs first. Coming. I only listed one, but I might mention them both. Oh. But anyways, yes, 100% Roshan is being overshadowed by by Mr. Robinson. Rightfully so. Bijan's phenomenal. Would, but Roshan can play. Would um, uh, any any... Speaking of Bijan, real quick, we haven't talked about him yet on the podcast. I'm sure he'll be coming up here. Um, is there any reason? I mean, how, I, I'm. I don't think you've probably done a whole lot of work on him just because he was an underclassman. But is there any reason why he's not the 101 in Superflex? I mean, would you take him 101 I mean, that, super? Would you take him 101 in Superflex? That's the only question. I mean, if you, it's the whole. It, it depends on. I'm going to cop out here, but it's how does your league value quarterbacks? Right. I mean, Matt and I have been in stuff where quarterbacks are just super inflated and through the roof and they cost more than gas does now. I still think he'll but, go I still think he'll go one on one in that league. It, uh, probably so. But Bryce Young is he should be in the conversation, but yes, at the prices Bijan's been pulling lately, you should take him one on one just for that. Yeah. I think Bijan I think But he's B got the talent to back it up. I mean, we did mock drafts already. We've done two mock drafts already and Bijan went ahead of both Bryce and CJ. I mean, yes, I took Bijan in one of them, but I took him over Brees Hall, and yeah, I maybe took him as the first running back off the board. No, nah, I think he was the second. I took him as the second running back off the board. I took JT, and I was drafting from the one from the from the turn one twelve. I took JT and uh, Peaches and, and Bijan. God, that's nice. Yeah, it's great. Um, but yeah, who's uh, who, who's the second running back you have there? So the second one, it, he's he's a name who came up last year. Surprisingly, we met school, had a little bit of off the field issues. But let me preface it with this. The NFL has a as a need for big body running backs because you have the last, my attention. The last few classes have not had the big guys who can run between the tackles consistently and just be that. You know, here take the take the shit work, and just get bullied. I think Atlanta has Chris, one. I, I, I think Atlanta has one know, of them. Uh, they do. He was he was a fun find. A little bit shorter frame though than this guy, but but somewhat similar 
skill set. Chris Rodriguez will be drafted higher than you think. Okay. And he will get work early just because he's 6'1", 225, and can just tote the rock and run gap and inside zone between the tackles. Don't be shocked if he's a third-round pick. Okay. Now, off the field may may bring him down a little bit. What happened off the field? I'm not. I, I mean, I'm not familiar with. with I, I know who he is, but I'm not familiar with what what happened there. Just some just some things where he got into. There was some legal trouble, and you know, it, a quick Google search will do it because I'm not any, super into any with it. D- any domestic stuff. Not that I'm aware okay. of. That's I don't think the, so. Yeah, Nothing okay. that'll that'll okay. you know exile him from from the league. So he'll be but at the combine. Don't be shocked. So if he'll he's, be at the combine. Uh, he should be. I don't see why he wouldn't be. I'll th- uh, I'll I'm not up to date on that list. I looked at it earlier, but but don't be shocked if he's like a James Conner type, who you know lands in the third round, gonna be a timeshare guy at first, but then all of a sudden is averaging four and a half five yards carry and is an RB two, right? So he's he will get drafted higher than you think because he is a big body. The NFL needs him, and he's a decent player. So Chris is a fun one. And where did Chris go to school? Kentucky. Okay. Uh, yes, he is. Probably he, he is at the combine. everybody. He is at the combine. Is the, the combine way. good? Yeah. So he's he's not going to run very fast. Like he's probably going to be a four six five four six five guy, four seven maybe. Sounds but like how, it's not. Sounds like how one Tyler Algier, four six four. Tyler had a great year. Excellent call by the the fat Mormon. We had a we That's had a his Twitter we, handle. He's not shaming him. We had a robust conversation. Yeah, both can be true. <laughs> we we had a robust conversation the last time we hopped on here about at, at Fat Mormon, hilarious Twitter name. Love it. <laughs> Always have best in the biz. Fuck it. Two T's. Don't forget the T. Exactly. Quentin Johnson two, over there. Two T's. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know who's not going to be at the combine? Sean Clifford. Yeah, I knew he was going to say oh, some stupid Sean. Penn State guy. <laughs> he was close. And only <laughs> one only one long snapper got a combine invite, too, and it wasn't Stoll. Don't get me started on that. There should be Matt Hembro and Chris Stoll should be at the combine. I don't know who Alex, I I don't know who Alex snapper Ward talk. is. You got to normalize long snapping. Make long snapping great again. the UCF kid. Yeah. All right, should we dive into the WRs? Yeah, the WRs. We'll dive in. Yeah, WRs. So... We talked about one kid that he was at the Shrine Bowl, but Michael Jefferson needs more love. He's 6'3", 210, 208, 210 pounds. He's long. He's a smooth mover. Uh, you know, I said earlier before, stylistically runs like Michael Pittman. So he's just got that long, fluid frame. But he can win deep. He's a heck of a double move guy. Wide catch radius. Like This could be a Detroit Lion, Kenny Galladay type asset. Where is a fourth round pick? The Detroit Kenny, Kenny Galladay, not the giant Kenny Galladay. That's why I said Detroit Kenny G because <laughs> we don't fuck with the giant Kenny Kenny G that we have the last two years. But Jefferson's a heck of a kid. He's a, such a good player, red zone threat, and the actual field stretching deep threat to be six three and moving that well. Super fun. Get to know him because I think he'll be drafted earlier than people think, and will surprise. So Where do you Michael think Jefferson, Louisiana. What, what, what round do you think he'll go? Dude, I, th- I think he ends up early day three. I think he's going to be one of those fourth round receivers where somebody might move up to get him just to make sure that he doesn't get snatched up earlier. Because, I mean, he, he'll be day three, but I think he'll be early day three enough to see significant snaps and contribute next year. All right. Who's the second guy? From Penn State. He transferred from Western Kentucky, Mitchell Tindley. Mitchell can play like slot guy, uh, you know, solid height, a, a little bit thin, but it doesn't matter because he moves so well. He's a he's a crafty route runner, excels through breaks. Like he just gets open. Very, very quarterback friendly target. Mitchell is so much fun. If he turns into a Tyler Boyd type asset, would not shock me. And I love Tyler Boyd. It's like guys who I can plug in and get 12 points a week from all day. And if something happens, one of those, I mean, he would be fucking awesome if they didn't have two number ones in front of him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He was awesome until they drafted Chase. And it was like, okay, yeah. well, yeah. But if um, one of those guys gets hurt, he's the instant plug. So Tinsley didn't For have sure. the year I was expecting him to have this past year. I don't, that could have been a, a number of things. Probably most likely probably the person throwing him the ball would, would probably be the starters. 
would, would probably... that probably didn't help. I uh, also just first year in the system. Uh, he also had an NFL draft pick in Parker Washington, who I almost put on the list playing across from him. So a lot of mouths to feed there. It's his first year. He played well. I think he was the best receiver at Western Kentucky last year with Bailey Zappi throwing the ball. And that was with Jareth Stearns catching 150 something passes. So the Tinsley popped. James Franklin loved him enough to offer him at a Western good player. Going to be a day three guy, but damn it. He's so smooth. He's easy. He's got good hands. Tinsley's too. fun. Good body control. Really, really good hands. He in red zone stuff. You, a lot of times you won't see the, I don't want to say slow slot guys, but you know, we, you see Tyreek running the crossers and the mesh stuff in the red zone and he's burning everybody. But a lot of times you won't see the smaller receivers in red zone situations. Tinsley will separate no matter who's on them. Yeah. So he'll, he'll be playing all over the field. So I'm a big Tinsley guy looked great at both the PA game and the shrine bowl. Heck of a player. I'm all in on him. Oh, he was at the NF- NFL PA um, bowl as well too. He was, he was there the week prior to us. Okay. We knew he was going there first. We, you know, had invited him prior, but um, yes, heck of a player that going to be a great slot and just going to be super consistent and reliable. Do you think he can so play? Man, do you think he can play outside in the NFL in a pinch? Sure. But like his, he's going to make his money in the slot. Okay. Very similar to B. Would you, I know you're not a big comp guy, but I mean, you are a comp guy, but would you comp him to Boyd in that sense or probably so? Okay. Cause Boyd's not a burner, but he's crafty. He's quick. He accelerates well. So a lot of times that doesn't translate to a great 40 time, but it doesn't need to. Yeah. Right. It's all about, are you flexible and bendy enough to sink into breaks, but also explosive enough to do that fluidly and get out cleanly. And he is like the way Cooper cup makes his, makes his hay. I don't want to say Cooper cup. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, exactly. The internet will take that. Yes. Un- understood. I'm talking about the way Cooper cup succeeds and the way he, cause he's not super fast. hundred percent. hundred percent. Oh, yes. he ran like a four, six, four. And he, the people buried him and then he got, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, uh, I was, I there. took him in our rookie mock it up before he fuck it up. And both of them boys hated on it. I think I took him. I got it. At, I got him. That was the greatest rookie pick I ever took when I took a Cooper Cup at four one in a fourteen team super flex draft. That's how you win. Yeah, and, and and a lot of people in that league kept talking him up, but they kept passing on him multiple times. Yeah, well, he ran a four six four. How, how could works. you ever be yeah. good? I was very six, four. I was very upset that the person in front of me took Chad Williams, and I got and I got stuck with Cup. Oh, the old Grambling State Chad Williams. Yeah, good, good times. Big fan. Um, and then so we're so I know, I know we love talking about. Guys, overhype, but uh, let let's do some hate, hate, hate. Uh, let's talk about a, a wide receiver running back who you think are getting too much love. Yeah, which which position you want to start with? Uh, let, let, let's keep it going with the herbs. We'll go with the herbs first. So let me let me say this: this is one of the best running back classes since the Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, McCaffrey twenty seventeen class. It's, yeah. It's not going to be as elite as that, but this depth is unreal. So I don't think these two guys are bad, but I think they're a little bit limited. So I'll start with Tank Bigsby. Good runner, tough runner. I don't see a lot of fluidity. I think he's stiff. I think he's scheme dependent, right? So you're not going to be able to throw him in any of the 32 offenses and he's going to find immediate success. He's just... Gonna, he's not going to be a guy who's going to be consistently explosive. I'm going to throw a name out here. They're not the same size. They're not perfect comps, but like a Devin Singletary type runner. Okay. Who's not going to be explosive, but he'll bounce off a tackler too. He'll absorb some contact and we'll get you three to four yards carry, which is fine. You better, need that in the much NFL. Much better pass catcher than Singletary. Agreed. Agreed. They threw the, they threw the ball to Singletary a lot when they had Hines and James Cook, that's beyond me, but I had Singletary in a lot of places, so let's ride. But anyways, I think Tank's going to be that guy who's just a little bit scheme dependent, stiff, you know, lacks a little fluidity. He's not going to hit home runs all the time. That's just who he is. I think he's a second round pick. I think he's a little bit better Isaiah Spiller. Spiller obviously didn't see much time this year. That wouldn't shock me if that happens to Tank. But I think Tank's a little bit better than that, so he should at least contribute in some form or fashion. But it's not going to be at 
at, at an elite level, like the name carries, especially the last two years in Debbie. He was a big name, top 10 pick. Shouldn't be that now. I think he ends up in the third to fourth round. We'll see, but a little bit lower on tank than the consensus. Yeah, I think I think people have been high on tank because he had he came out on fire that freshman year. So um, he's been a name that that's been in people's minds. Um, but the, I mean, that dumpster fire of Auburn the last basically since Brian Harson got there has been could be a factor of that as well too. the quarterback play there. Oh, my God, was awful. Just uh, absolutely abysmal at Auburn. Tough to get consistency year. at that spot for them, which was a bit of a hindrance on that offense, but what can you do? You can't have every, every school can't have a Sean Clifford. Let's be real. Did it just go down? What's up? Your erection. It's been down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're like, like what Sean Clifford is the one Penn state guy that doesn't trigger movement in the positive. I mean, I love man. Sean Clifford. I love Clifford in the way I love Hackenberg. In the fact that they're both... That's my quarterback. Yeah, exactly. Like, Clifford was probably an actually a better quarterback than Hackenberg. Hackenberg just had that had those brawl abilities, but he just got absolutely murdered his entire time in State College because they couldn't recruit offensive linemen while he was there. And um, that probably ruined him in a way that quarterbacks were ruined in the NFL because they just got demolished, a.k.a. Um, uh, uh, what's the guy from uh, Carr? Um, uh, David Carr. The way David Carr got mur- the way David Carr just got destroyed when he when, when he was with the Houston. I think it's too much hair gel. That's probably what his <laughs> issue is. Which Super Bowl I, champ David Carr though. Let's not forget. Who did he win a Super Bowl with? The Giants. He, he was did? Eli's backup. The <laughs> oh the year that the, the year they didn't have Jared Lorenzen. was uh was what oh, the backup R- was David R- Carr. R- 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 R.I.P. R- Jared Lorenzen. What's that? Yes. The hefty oh, yeah. Left. R.I.P. Hefty left. I prefer the Pillsbury Throw Boy. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's A-plus nicknames. Oh, for sure. Anybody else you want to hate on, <laughs> Riley? <laughs> I'll hate on Sean Tucker a little bit for yeah. similar reasons. I think he's a he's really good at what he does. Compactly built, downhill runner, another scheme-dependent guy who's going to need an outside zone you know, team to really find success with he's he struggles in pass pro he, you're, he's not a guy you're going to throw out on third down and say go catch the ball like similar to singletary in that aspect so kind of similar receivers there but like when i when i watch sean tucker i think chase edmonds somebody who is going to be in a 50 50 timeshare at best he'll produce when given the ball but he's not this high-end name like we want which is fine but just know that he's a little bit one dimensional and that he's outside runner, you know, explosive guy for sure, but he's not going to be shifty contact balance between the tackles. Like that's just not his game. So he's not going to be able to slide into the Dallas Cowboys and run their inside zone stuff and be successful. He's going to need a Falcons. He's going to need just consistently Dolphins. outside, outside zone run schemes sounds which like, is fine sounds like an la ram to me uh, again like rams are a little bit of a combo team yeah but in some of the stuff that they do sean would be really good yeah they do so they, they that's do, why yeah they run a good bit of outside zone that's why and they need a they could probably use another running back there so but they or need, just an old line to start with that would be that would be <laughs> preferable yeah and, have, anybody's gonna get gonna struggle to, or anybody's gonna run through that line consistently now, but, but yeah, so that's why just a little bit lower on Sean. He just needs a lot of things to fall right to really hit for you. I would, I don't know. I haven't done the, I, we haven't done our evaluation on Sean Tucker yet. Uh, we just did Zach Evans and Zach Charbonnet. We did the Zachs, but, um, you know, I, from what I've seen from Tucker, I like it. And, and I don't know, you know, I don't know what guy is great at pass protection. You know, Kyron Williams was great at pass protection and he ended up, that, that didn't do much for him draft capital wise. You know, I think what's well, cause he ran a, like a four, eight guys can figure out how to pass protect. You know, if you're, if you're going to figure it out in the NFL, if you're going to succeed in the NFL, you can figure out how to pass protect. Right. I, I don't know if that's ever really been a huge concern for me. A lot of times they're not asked to pass protect a bunch as far as receiving. I mean, he had a target share in the 95th percentile and he did catch 36 balls last year. I mean, yeah. I feel like he, he's pretty efficient in any ways or, or, or capable. Um, 
So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where he gets drafted and, and how high. Um, and, and, and like I said, I haven't done. It's interesting to hear that, he, you know, that's a good one because people aren't going to like that. I think most people like Sean Tucker, so that's a good one. Now, don't get me wrong. I I like him, right? Like track guy for for Syracuse, which is awesome to see because, you know, he, he knows how to literally run. That's hard for a lot of college kids. They've never been coached on running, uh, which is why some kids run slower. I could name drop a few, but I won't. Sure. Um, and that's why it doesn't like running, really running matter is a, at the combine. You know, is if is this man running fast in pads? That's what matters. Like, you know, for sure. And it's but just it running's a running should be a course. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So right, the former Sean knows how to run, know how to do it. Oh yeah, so he's explosive, and I like him for sure. But just know that. It, he may not hit. There's a little bit more risk with him than others, which is why I'm... Would y'all say he's like probably the consensus-ish RB3 in this class? I don't think there is a consensus RB3 in this class right now. But he now. would probably be the guy on most people's like RB3 list, right? I, I, I think that sounds right, but I think there's just such a... It, there's such, I mean, it's obviously a big the, tier, you know, I don't, yes, I don't know. For sure. And there's, a, there's obviously a tier drop from Gibbs down to the third tier. And people are saying there's a bigger drop from, I don't know. How do you feel about this rally? Would you say there's a bigger drop from Bijan to Gibbs or from Gibbs to the wide, to the art, to the RB three? I think there's a bigger drop from, I think there's a bigger drop from Bijan to Gibbs. Okay. That's a good question. Does, is that, does that mean you're lower on Gibbs or does that mean you're higher on? That's how good yeah. Bijan is. I, I mean, that's how good Bijan is okay. to, to say the least. But I mean, also. If Jameer was 210, like, would you feel differently? No, it wouldn't change his game. He could be 230 and it wouldn't change how he plays. Because he is I just. I love how he plays. I mean. Oh, 100%. I mean, he's, he's my RB2. I've got Zach Evans right below Gibbs. Okay. So I, I'm very high on Zach Evans, a very good player. I just hope he's not the slider of this year's class. I hope mm. something doesn't go right or I hope something doesn't go wrong off the field. Speaking of bad pass protection, you know, Zach Evans isn't great in pass protection. And there are he some doesn't, off the field con- question marks. I don't I don't know what to believe necessarily. Obviously, there's like the fact that he uh, got suspended in the, in the championship game. I actually got suspended a couple games before that, backed out of a national <laughs> intent to sign with Georgia, whether that was mutual or Georgia booted him, it's a little bit up for debate. Uh, well, and he got, and he was outshone this year by, by a true freshman as well, too. Which, that dude's filthy. Yeah, Junk- Junkins is good. But he still, you know, was crushing yards per carry. Sure, I mean, yeah, yeah. But but not great in the receiving game either. Yeah. So, I could see him sliding because of the receiving or because of off-the-field stuff. The NFL is probably going to tell us how they feel about him. I'm interested. That's a big one. Because let's talk about pure runner. Oh, my God. Like, he's, yeah, he's good. fucking phenomenal. Like, that dude is super fun to watch. And just, like, it's, it's like so simple. There's nothing complicated to his game. He just moves in such a way. That, I like the way yeah. you move. Yeah, the, the cucumber accents the water in such a way that uh, that's a... The other guys reference Will Ferrell and is that the name? That's the name of the movie, right? The other guys, they're yeah. oh yeah, the cops, yeah. Just drinking, did my first desk popper. Drinking this cucumber water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, had my first desk pop. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap this segment up. Uh, Sean Tucker on the let's hate on him a little. Bit. We didn't do the wide receivers yet for the hating on the wide receivers. I thought it was just open ended question of who's who who you who you got got. You have two it, wide but. receivers. You're down on. I do more so than the backs. Get it? I, I'm I'm much lower on Josh Downs than the consensus because I don't think he's got the feel to work against zone consistently. He runs with his head down. And he's not looking for the damn ball. It drives me nuts. He's a great athlete. He's going to move well, but he's slot only because he's so short and he doesn't work in zone well. He could prove me wrong. He could be a great player, but I I I'm not buying it right now. People are taking him over Zay. That's like wanting six dollars over twenty dollars, and I don't get it. <laughs> I'm just. I'm, Is it two two dollar bills that are old? You know, like like, <laughs> or three I mean, two dollar bills? Jesus, math. Even uh, if it's in quarters, I'd rather have twenty dollars over six. Well, bucks. no, but the two dollar bill, you know, it could be worth a little bit more than two dollars, right? Because they don't make them anymore. Well, they're pre. Or, what, what 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 if it's a pre seventy six quarter? Those are, there's a real silver in them. True. Yeah. What if it's, it's a true? Those could be thousands. <laughs> but yeah, a l- little bit lower on downs. I just. Yeah, I'm with you, you on know, Zay over Downs for sure. I mean, I mean that's not even close for me. Zay is a top Z- three, Zay, four receiver in this if class. If Zay goes so. in the in the mid first round, then 
he should be discussed in the tier with the top three guys, you know, like, but anyway, we, we've talked enough about Zay. Who, who else, uh, who else you a little bit down on in this class? Uh, so like, Xavier Hutchinson is a guy who I just don't get it with. So from Iowa state, he's getting, he's not a, a top guy right now, but even still he's six two two oh eight. He's not fluid. He's a, he runs duck footed. So his feet are at like 45 degree angles. It's a very obtuse way of running. It, it lacks fluidity. He can't break inwards. He can only break out, which I find fascinating. But I just don't get it with him. I don't, I don't see it. I, I see a, a camp guy at most who will find his way onto a roster, but I don't think he'll ever contribute. He was, at the other, he, was at, he was at the other bowl game, correct? The other one that I can never remember the name of, like mm. the Kit Kat game or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just he I don't I don't get it with with him. Josh is much better than than Hutchinson, so Downs is far and away better. But Hutchinson, I just don't get it all with. When you're not fluid and you can't really separate, that's not a good combination. Uh, the the the, uh, the tripod here is is a bit um uh, I wouldn't say split, but is a bit undecided on Mister Johnston. What are your thoughts there on on old QJ? Not wide receiver one. He should not be the first receiver off the board. Okay. But there he's he's toolsy enough. He's like a he's like a high school pitcher who should go in the top ten in the MLB draft. He's okay. projectable, he's long, he throws hard, right? Okay. But there's a wide variety of outcomes with him. Sure. And I think that's that's my baseball uh comparison of the night. So I fun player, I like him. He does a lot well, he moves well, he's long. There's just a yeah. I don't know. Where do you where do you have him in the class? I've got him at three. Okay, good. So Addison and, and okay, good. We Jay can still be then. friends. But I've got Zay at four, and I think you could really talk me into Zay over over Johnston. But six four two fifteen, and he's going to run a sub four four is tough to tough yeah. to match. Unicorn DNA, you know. And yeah, and like- you, you got to take you have to take chances on that that doesn't come around every day you know diversify you know choke up swing hard in some of your leagues i i want some quitting i don't want to leave sure no no i'm 100 there with you and if you got to reach a little bit that's just we're gambling here and because if you could put it all together sure because sometimes he plays dominant sometimes he attacks the ball other times he doesn't it lets the ball get on him doesn't go up in the air with the contested catches people really hate him about that uh, Other times drops. he's one catches for one catch for two yards in a national in a national spotlight. Man, I'm not gonna hold one game against the best defense in the world against my man. I, I refuse to do that. Just like you, 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 Kenny Pickett had that one game where he sucks. So he eight can't yards, eight, eight yards. Right. Thank you, <laughs> eight <laughs> yards. <I got> eight. <laughs> Kenny Pickett on the way up. I'm coming. Hey, I'm coming around on Pickett. Uh, I'm coming around on Pickett. I told. I've been saying that for weeks. Not I'm gonna. Around I told you. Pickett. I told you two years ago. Pickett could sling it. Absolutely not going to hold the national championship game against Quinn for me anyway. Um, I'm not either. I just, I'm just, 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 just poking holes, just poking holes. It's not, it's which not is good, fair. You, you can poke holes hole. in this game. That's, that's the part of drafting not, a high school pitcher top game, 10. But yes, you can poke some holes in this game, but, but yeah, but you, that's a, it's a very small hole. You also can't coach what he has. And if he has the mentals, right, which there's nothing to indicate that he doesn't sure. And, uh, can the, put it all together and harness, but the helmet scouts. Yeah, whatever. I mean, Rager. I, I went and looked. Rager had awesome metrics from college, like and jo- and and Dotson was like he tore his Achilles like three times or something in the NFL. Did like, Josh? Did Josh Boyce go to TCU as well? I don't even know who I don't that know. is. So maybe Trayvon Boykin went to TCU, and that was the name I heard a couple days ago on a, on a dozen episode that was a throwback. Uh, I do remember that. I got that one correct. But even like worst case with Johnston, you're going to get a DJ chart type receiver. A DJ's fine. You throw him in when you need to, and he scores a ton because he catches Chark's a 70 yard touchdown. Slight. Maybe, and maybe, maybe Johnston doesn't weigh in at 215 at the combo. Josh but. Boyce did go to TCU, by the way. So shout out to me. Uh, but that's like worst case with Johnston. He, he's going to be better than that. More consistent than that. So I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't worry about I'm it. I'm not mad much. if you don't want to take him one or two, you know, like, but I, I'm, I will at some point, some, mm-hmm. some draft, you know, like I'm not going to be mad if you do either, you know, like I said it when we did his profile, what's your flavor of ice cream? You like the small shifty guy? You like the big, tall, strong thing? You can't coach like cookie dough, cookie dough. <laughs> I want cookies and cream. 
Actually, you know what I really want? The best thing in the world you could eat is a birthday cake remix from Cold Stone. It's birthday That's cake way flavored ice sweet. cream. It's way too sweet. With a, br- with a homemade brownie inside of it. And oh, my God. It's got, I, I sub caramel instead of the chocolate and then it's got some sprinkles like it's just where's there where's there colds don't even open you gotta go to north charleston i'm not fucking driving north charleston go to everything i'm tired of driving north charleston go to everything what else is there only well top golf that's it uh b dubs is in north charleston b dub yeah nothing dude buffalo wild wings yeah that shit's disgusting I that is let's go i hate i hate b dubs it's not great it is terrible it's bar food it's like Terrible bar food. Like we live in Charleston. There's so much amazing food here. I will <laughs> never. You will never catch me. I, I, I've been. To, I've been to that B Dubs once. That was probably, probably a bad. It's example. a dope setup, you know. And it was, I was there for a fantasy draft. It's a dope setup. I'll give them that. But they were like the last ones to ban smoking inside too. They had a smoking area that really ruined. Like because North Charleston didn't have that. Yeah. Whatever. We're getting off track here. <laughs> Anybody else you want to throw some shade at, Riley? Before we end this little segment. Um. No, I, I don't think I want to throw shade at anybody else. <laughs> are you still um? Uh, are you still hating on one Will Levis? I think that goes along with everybody, though. You know, that's not out of. The I mean, world. I don't. Except I don't, ev- ex- ex- except apparently every NFL GM because he's still being mocked in the in the top ten in every mock I've seen. Yeah, so I don't was, love him, but so was uh, uh, Willis. You know what I mean? Like they just they elevate the quarterbacks because. The, the the analysts aren't ready to do what the NFL is doing, which is actually pushing these guys back. Yeah, but I think good. Levis is a lot more translatable into the NFL than than Willis was. Agreed. And a name that doesn't get thrown around with Levis like I think it should is Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. I think they're very similar players. Okay. Good arm, just not polished. You, you see the traits there. I mean, Love kind of got screwed with Green Bay drafting him, mm-hmm. but yeah. I I could see a very similar arc there. Maybe Will gets a shot a year or two earlier than than Jordan Love will. But I think they're very similar players. A lot of risk, but also decent amount of upside. But I don't think I don't think either are great. So that should be that should be said. Here's an interesting uh, question. I'd much rather take a shot on Richardson. Here's an interesting question for you here, Riley. Is Josh Allen bad for NFL GMs? Because we at Josh Allen didn't check any boxes in terms of metrics. He wasn't great, but he had that frame. And without Josh Allen, does Will Levis get the shot that he's that he's getting? So, I mean, it, it, it all goes back again to when you have a guy that big, that strong, and can run. Like, you gamble on that no matter what. And you, you knew about the arm talent from Josh Allen. It was just the accuracy, you know, that was called into question. But then he got the capital, and then when he came in, yeah, no, 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 there no, were no. certain flashes about it. You know, like I, I keep hearing people being like, you know, he wasn't good his first two years in the league, and then he was good his third year. It was like, I mean, maybe from a metric standpoint, but like he was showing you. Yeah, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not. He was. I'm just talking about totally. I'm just talking about college only. Talk college only. Well, then another thing there with the the accuracy question is why, right? If you ask yeah. most of Twitter why he was inaccurate in college, nobody's going to give you the right answer. So, like he he's always been an accurate thrower, but the mechanics, the base, the tempo—it's like a golf swing. You can tell when a guy's got it, but he's coming over the top a little bit because he's not letting his hips fly open first, right? The timing is messed up. So he was always an accurate guy, but just he was really raw because he never had high level FBS coaching. Yeah. But you see the tools you see, he's obviously a smart kid, which is why he went top 10. He's well-spoken. He knows what he's doing. He's not an idiot. Which that which, goes in Will Levis's court as well, right? He's right. about to crush. Puts his mayonnaise in his, in his coffee. Right? So yeah, might that. be an idiot. Eats bananas um, without peeling them. Might be an idiot. I mean, yeah, those raise more questions for me than right. on the field stuff. Right. So, but yeah, so it wasn't that Josh was inaccurate. It's, why was he struggling to connect? And it was just mechanics and and coaching stuff. And they figured it out. And that's Kurt, why he's successful. Kurt Rocker, that's why. I mean, so it's more of do you trust your coaches? That's the big question. No, no one trusted like Kurt Rocker. That's why he got fired after one season. That's correct. <laughs> but that's the question that people need to ask: is one, do you trust coaches? And two, can you can you mold this guy? So it's never a question of tools. So if the Colts love Levis and think that they can make him into something, they got to hire a head coach first. But maybe they take a shot at four and he he proves everybody wrong. 
God, I hope it's not Jeff Saturday. That would just be an awful move. There's no shot it's Jeff Saturday. I, I think it's Gannon from uh, I think it's uh, Eagles defensive coordinator. Well, I think it's between. I think it's going to be one of the Eagles. One of the Eagles coordinators, for sure. 